here we are we got this giant we're well not giant but we got this big uh direct fired makeup air unit this one has the evaporative cooler section that had uh, frozen and smashed up the cell deck pads so we're going to replace those today change a motor pulley um clean all the little uh mister orifices and then put some uh, new filters on this guy uh, a couple of filters are busted up so we've got a new pad right here whole new assembly it comes I've got a new water valve because remember the water valve is bad so there's no power to this unit it's completely shut off and the water valve stuck open so we've got a new water valve and then we're gonna go ahead and pull these misters since we're in here and we're gonna soak them all in ice machine cleaner clean them up because they're not spraying very well same on the top we get them all pulled out then we've got a new uh, motor pulley, motor sheave, whatever you want to call it, and some new belts. So we've got some work cut out ahead of us. So on this valve, the new one is identical. I'm going to try to get these screws apart. They're pretty rusted in there because it'd be really cool if I could just rebuild it and not have to change the whole thing. I don't know if that's possible, but that's what I'm going to attempt to do is just rebuild it because it's identical. So. We'll see. That's what I'm trying to do right now. I got one of them loose, but one of them already broke a bit on me. So this one right here I got loose. So I got some lubricant on them, uh, penetrating oil. So I'm going to try to break them free. So in order to get this off, we had to pull it apart in pieces because of the way that it turned inside of here. It was hitting the wall, so we had to pull the stem apart. But it's interesting because I'll pull this apart even more later, but it's uh there's like it's, the valve is exploded inside internally in here you can see springs and stuff you can't see that in the video right now but i'll try to get a better shot of it later all right so i was not able to rebuild the valve because i couldn't get the screws out they were breaking on me so but it's all good it really wasn't that hard to change anyways just pulled it out luckily there's a union right on that side so pulled that out and everything kind of unthreaded luckily they did it with teflon so it was easy so now test turn it on and we don't get water blown out we have all this misters pulled out at the moment all these work off of a misting device and we have them all soaking in ice machine cleaner at the moment just to try to get any calcium out of them and stuff and then we'll put them back in and finish the rest of the unit so I'm currently putting the new pulley on, struggling a little bit. We got it all cleaned up nice and good. I used my uh, pulley puller to get the old one off. This one's a little bit tight, so we're just getting the keyway lined up and then pushing it on. All right, so we've got our pulley on. The alignment is straight, looking good. And I can go see that on camera. Got my uh, tension nice and set good. Where it's supposed to be it's nice and even the other pulley basically we had uneven tension and uh i'll put it back together and show you guys but the grooves are tapered and they're not you know they're they're worn and they're not supposed to look like that so and it was just basically we had a loose belt on the front tight belt on the back and they were adjusted basically the same so but this one's nice and good tension set where it's supposed to be so we're now just uh, finishing up doing the spray rail or the little misters. All right, so we pulled all these guys out, soaked them. Um, on some of them, the red ones, they, they all had strainers, but the red ones, the strainers were so short that they were all plugged up. So what we did was we pulled the strainers out. And my theory behind that is, is that if I can get another season out of these, yeah, it'll pl probably plug up the holes, but by pulling the strainers out because they couldn't be cleaned anymore the strainers were just plugged with mud so uh you know we'll get another season and then next year we'll just change them all instead of cleaning them but these ones right here had really nice strainers in them that were cleanable so it's kind of weird how they have different strainers but it is what it is so all right all right cell deck is nice and good looking all the way across give it about a month and it'll look like crap Everything in here is good, so we're going to test this guy. Okay, so on the direct fired makeup air unit, for the heating section, you've got a couple controls. You've got a high temperature limit right here. You've got a temperature controller that turns the heat on and off. And then you have a temperature controller that controls the amount of flame, essentially. 
or the amount of heat in the discharge air. Okay, the temperature controller should call for heat first, so we can do it right now where, okay, so if you look, here comes my sequence of operation. We're proving airflow right now, and then we're gonna light the flame, and then we're lit. And then now that it's lit, I control the amount of flame, and you can see it in the pressure. Right now we're running really low. Okay, and basically, I can turn the heat up right there, and you can watch it in your pressure. This is your outlet gas pressure, and you're gonna see it rise. typically don't need a lot of heating because we really don't get very cold weather here so we have this set all the way down like 55 degree supply air and then we typically run this guy at about 45 degrees okay so you know we're typically not even gonna run this thing right now you see obviously it shuts off now you also have your cooling section okay so on this you've got a cooling media Okay, this is called cell deck pads, all right? And the air is being drawn across the cell deck pads and you have a temperature controller right here, okay? So if this temperature controller gets turned low enough, okay, to, you know, lower than the outer ambient, so now I have it set for 30 degrees, see my lights are on. So what it does is it has a bunch of different timers and you gotta read the manual and it tells you how to do it, but essentially there's a timer that says you're gonna turn the sprayers on for this long and then there's another timer that says the sprayers won't turn on again for this much time and you basically adjust it that way and the whole point of this style and I'm gonna turn this because we run this really high too we run this about 85 degrees the whole point of this is is that you do not want these pads being saturated to the point that there's water dripping in here because this isn't like a normal evaporative cooler that has standing water in all theory you do not want water coming down to this drain pan down here because you want it to be evaporated before it hits the bottom. So that's the whole point of the timer right here, is, is that we spray just enough water on this cell deck pad that by the time the water would make it down to the bottom to go into the drain pan, in theory, it should evaporate. So we do have a little bit of excess water down in there right now, but that's because I've been playing with it. So these things really aren't that critical, but our problem was, was that this solenoid valve right here was sticking open and it was during the freezing time, so they had that giant chunk of ice, which I'll show you guys a clip of that right now too. But the whole thing was a frozen block. That is ice, frozen solid. We come over here, you can see that, you know, we, th this thing shouldn't be this loose. These, these pads, you shouldn't have this play in here. And this was the problem with these ones was, they were just damaged from all the ice. But you see all that play, that shouldn't be there. They, they, they just basically destroyed the pads, so 